Google, Amazon, Microsoft. These are companies that have three things in common. They started in a garage, they're tech companies, and they are successful. Today, we have a similar story, although not quite the same. This company did not start in a garage, but it did start in a basement. And it has nothing to do with technology, but rather it's 100% dedicated to real estate. But something that this company have in common with these ones over here is that they seek to provide the best possible service for their customer. In fact, they have even done projects for the White House, which makes them very successful. The company specializes in working in those areas of your property that nobody wants to do work in, but that everybody needs. And those are bathrooms and kitchens. And they do that by drilling and cutting stones. Today's episode, it's very special for me, not only because we get to talk about real estate and creative ways to make money in real estate, but it's because I have two special people, very special people. They're actually very close friends of mine and we've known each other for 15 years. And I'm actually very glad that they were able to agree to be on an interview with us to share everything they do, everything from the creative process to the delivery of their services, their product, to make properties stand out. So without further ado, let's just welcome our guests. Nelson, Clara, welcome to our channel. Thank, Thank you, you. Lucy. Thank you for having us, Lucy. The pleasure is mine. And um, I know I've known you guys for a long time, but our viewers don't. So. How about we start by sharing where are you two originally from? How do you guys meet? Uh, so that way they get to see who you are as a person. Well, we um, both are originally from Colombia, but we met here while uh, going to college. So we came to the States, um, I came 94, you came 95. And um, you know, like any other immigrant, uh, you know, we came in, to learn the language, um, you know, just better our lives. And, um, you know, we had uh, just regular nine to five, you know, poor jobs. And at the same time, you know, we, um, I was going to a college to learn English. Once I did that, then I started business. Um, and during this time also, I had the idea to start our business, RJ Eggs. And, um, you know, pretty quickly I realized that I just couldn't do both. So, um, you know, I ended up um, dropping college and, um, I, and around that time is, is when I met Clara. Um, and uh, we pretty quickly started dating and, and she's been a big part of why I've been able to achieve what I have achieved because uh, she's helped me uh, tremendously. Yeah, as you can see, we're both from Colombia. Uh, we have our heavy accent, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we met here. It's been it's been a journey. It's been fun, and it's been challenging. Us as immigrants, it's, it's never been easy. It was very difficult. It is getting easier now, but uh, yeah, thanks to destiny or uh, whatever you want to call it, we met. We got together. We got to know each other. We believed in each other and we made this business happen just by, it sounds easy, but it was just by working hard, believing on his art, him believing on me, and putting all that together with years and patience and, and opportunities that this country gave us. Uh, we made the uh, tile business, our Zayx, happen. So a lot of homeowners, uh, real estaters could use it and enjoy it and live with it. And so the whole concept of Versaic, so we're merging art, we're merging creativity, and that you couple with stones and, and, and pieces uh, that you put together and create art, and then you put it into people's homes. Mm -hmm. How did you come about with that idea? How did that all of a sudden just, oh, I think I can make a living by doing this. How, how did that happen? So basically it, it's, it's been a, um, a number of steps. Of, uh, steps, I will say more than steps, it's just been a number of destiny, you know, happenings that brought us to this point. Back then when, the, 
you know, like I said, I was going to college and um, I came up with the idea of, of creating mosaics. And the, the, the reason why I came up with this idea is because I, I was working at the time as a salesman for a tile store. So I was introduced to design, art, uh, stone, and pretty much the industry. What's funny is the reason I got this job is because before that, I was looking to just better myself and I got a job as a, a, a for an electronic company. And my first day going to this place, my car broke down. So I never made it. So because of that, I basically, you know, never got the job. They didn't give me a second chance. And then I got the job at, at, a, at a tile store. And that's where it opened my eyes to um, all this new industry. Um, but besides that, I, you know, I've always been pretty artistic. I always painted, drew, I did sculpture, ceramics. So I've, I've done a number of things. So when I saw the opportunity of just just uh, what, what this product was and, and the, the necessity in the industry, just there was yeah. basically like nothing available that, you know, combined art, stone and all these different mediums for the home. I basically took the idea and with the help of my wife, back then my girlfriend, which is pretty amazing, um, you know, we were able to uh, just just get it off the ground and, and, and just made it to, you know, what it was then, what it is now. Yeah, uh, back then, for some reason, we, we immigrated to this country, we started seeing the uh, real estate business, we started realizing how important it is to have a house how beautiful it is to have a house. Uh, at that time, at that age, it seems impossible. You think, oh my God, I will never have a house. But we saw like the whole culture runs center around, in the house. Center around buying a house. I have to have a house. And it's beautiful and everybody deserves a house. It's, it's, it's your home. So we saw that and we, with his experience now with the tile and now his artistic, inspiration coming out. He said, put this product together and make it happen, make it go to people's homes, make it be part of their, their walls or their floors or the um, fireplaces even. And we saw it, we worked hard, it was slow, but basically that's what we do. We put our art into tile into somebody's home to make it better, to make it more value per se. So you, you saw a gap in the industry, right? There were plenty of tiles available. Everybody can make tiles. But then you realized there was something that was missing. Like they, you, need, you wanted to create something more unique mm -hmm. that made it stand out because, I mean, a home is a home, but you want people to experience their homes as a century, as the place that everybody wants to go to and spend time and, and make right. connections and build memories. And you felt that the tile industry at the time was not delivering it because what no. you will find in one house, you can also see in another house. And what's the fun about it, right? Like you wanted to make something that will stand out, not only to have it as a conversation piece, but also to make it more valuable. So in the event that if people were to choose to sell it or if people will decide to go into the industry just to flip homes, that you will be there helping that contractor, that builder make the house stand out in front of their competition. Correct, so, so houses are sold by the way they look. So a nice house obviously is gonna get a, a quicker offers, better offers. And, and our product definitely helps beautify the home. And also something that we saw pretty early on is that, you know, kitchens and bathrooms, they're, they're treated different here. They're, they're living spaces. They're, they're spaces that, that, that are used for you to hang out, to be functional, to be fun. Yes. Um, a kitchen is not, it's not just to cook. A kitchen is to spend time, the same with the bathroom. And, and we kind of took that approach and, and took it to another level by creating art for these spaces. And so you came up with this idea, you saw a gap and then you created the opportunity for yourself. Tell us about the beginning days of Arsaic. How was it like for you guys? So it, it's definitely been a struggle. It was a struggle. It hasn't been a struggle. It was a struggle. <laughs> Um, when I started doing tile designs, I, um, I started doing it out of um, my bedroom apartment, which I share with my mom and sister. 
So uh, I had a tiny little space and, and I had this little machine that I bought in Home Depot for $100, which was loud. So uh, I, I used to lock myself in the bathroom uh, and I cut it out of the bathroom oh, because right. the noise. Um, and I did that, I made little tile designs and um, I showed it around um, and, and people liked it, liked it a lot actually. And I started getting uh, jobs. Um, so I started going around to other people and I, I ended up with uh, one client specifically. Um, I walked in there, I was just not dressed for the meeting. I had no business cards, I had nothing. I just walked in with uh, this tile piece that I have made and the guy has never seen anything like it. So he started asking me questions, you know, my background, how did I come up with this? Um, two days later, he calls me with a sizable job. At the time it was $5,000, which that was the money that I was making in three, four months. So he gives me this order and uh, I was just panicking, like, how am I gonna deliver this? So my wife, Clara, then my girlfriend, offered to um, use her basement. So she was cutting for me tiles out of her house on her spare time because she had a full-time job. So she was doing this at night uh, and weekends, and she was bringing me bags of tiles already cut into little pieces. And I was uh, doing it on my free time, which it was nights and weekends. Um, to, to ensemble, um, you know, this particular job. And I recruited my aunt, which she's never worked with, uh, you Tiles. know, piece of tile in her industry. She's an accountant um, and, and she loved it. Um, and at the end of the day, the guy, the customer was extremely happy um, and, and he loved the product, he loved the service and he supported us from that day on uh, for a very long time. And I will say he was one of the reasons what, um, you know, that, that we came what we are because he, from day one, he supported us quite a bit to the point that I had to start cutting back in days at my job. Clara had to start it, you know, all the same thing, you know, just cutting back in days. And, and we moved to her basement. We moved to, actually it was my sister's basement. Right. It was my sister's house. And she was kind enough to lend it to us for a year. We worked there for a year. I worked there for a year, and yeah, that 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 was our our beginners. And and the original crew, I remember you guys yeah. were sharing the picture the with me. The original crew was his aunt, my little sister, his cousin, him right. and me. It was um, a year working out of a, a basement, and uh, that that was a I will say a challenging, also a big learning curve because that year gave us uh, confidence, security. We always had work since day one. Um, yes. You know, I remember even the first time I made the first tile piece, which was about this large, within a week I sold it. Um, two weeks later, another and another. And um, these are very basic, you know, compared to what we make nowadays. They were extremely simple, um, but there was, there was just nothing like it in the industry. And, and we always, uh, you know, been fortunate to, to just have people that really love our product, our service, our quality, and, and we, we stay pretty busy. But yeah, that, that year was, um, you know, a, a learning curve to the point that, uh, you know, we had to leave, you know, we outgrew that space quite rapidly and we had to just get a warehouse uh, instead of a a hundred dollar machine, we got two five hundred dollar machine <laughs> yes. and, uh, and and the process just kept evolving from there. And I think something that is worth mentioning is that, um, you know, we, we come from our, you know, humble beginnings, you know, struggle and all that. But what's been more amazing to me and more challenging is the fact that we've been through so much uh, disaster. We went We've been through 9-11, um, that was the beginning of our business. We even, that tragedy kept us a little bit of work, which kept us going and not losing hope. Then came um, a Katrina. Recessions. Then the recession, um, COVID, you know, a bunch of, of natural and man-made disasters. And we've been through all those difficulties which tell us that you know our product, our quality, our where we are is it matters. It's 
keeps going. I mean, you're you're bringing creations to people's homes, and at the end of the day, people do get reset at their home. So you're able to bring that piece of quietness, that piece of mindfulness, which will eventually get to tour part of their house, and you will see what what I mean by that. But I mean, it goes beyond just a piece of art. It's we, people need to reset. And it seems that you have been able to provide that in key places of a house, which is the kitchen where most people get together and hang out. And then the bathroom. I mean, it's like your bathroom is it's like a spa. It's like walking into a spa and well, like, I can it makes tell you, you relax. Even from experience, it's just satisfying. And, um, when you have your own project, your own house, whether you're doing a renovation or you're building it, and just be able to make it your own. And how do you make it your own? Uh, you know, there's there's certain areas that, that you can do beautiful things. Kitchen's one of them, bathroom's one of them. But we go beyond which is not just making it your own, but creating things for you. It's not just a piece of tile that you're buying out of, out of a box store and you just put it up. Uh, you know, we, we create things that are specific to you, uh, designs that are, that speak to you, colors that, mm -hmm. you know, bring something in you. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's really what we're about, just just creating something beautiful, special, and it's, it's made to you. That's why we, we, I believe we're still relevant and, and we, we matter. People like us because of that concept. I mean, the work in itself and the demand that you guys keep getting speaks for itself. But you've also gotten work from really well-known people and places. So why don't you share with us a little bit about that? So again, because our product is so individual and, and special, uh, we have the fortune to work with um, some pretty uh, you know, well-known artists, uh, Gloria Stefan being one of them, Billy Joel, Sarah, Jessica Parker. And in addition to that, we've done work in some pretty well-known landmarks, uh, the Mark Hotel in New York City, the Waldorf Astoria, the Plaza, and the most famous of all houses, the White House. Tell us a little bit about the White House project. So again, most of these, you know, high profile jobs, they you know, they go pretty fast track and, uh, you know, pretty sensitive. So one day we just get a phone call from a firm in Washington, D.C. that they were doing a renovation in one of the wings out of the White House. And um, they asked us, they didn't ask us, they said if we wanted the job, we had to deliver within three days, which is it was a pretty aggressive deadline, that extremely aggressive. Well, who doesn't want to have that in their resume? So we said, you know, the, we we will make it happen. And sure enough, uh, three days later, we were sending pictures of the finished product. They loved it. Uh, and that same day, it was out en route to the White House and uh, and the firm were, were extremely happy. And uh, again, another client that after that has been supporting us since then. Would you say that's the project that got you to be well known, that got you to where you are today? Uh, it, it, it's been a collection of projects, if I have to say. That's that's one of them. Another project that I think that we are pretty proud of. Um, we work at the Barnes Museum in Philadelphia. So this is one of the biggest museums that has been built in the U.S. probably in the past 30 years. Um, and the, the, the museum was commissioned to a pretty well-known architect in the city. And we have the opportunity to work hand in hand with them um, to, to create this this wonderful, you know, gallery as you walk in into the museum. They loved it. The, 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 uh, the founders of the museum loved it, uh, the architects, and even the, the, some of the politicians from the area also were involved. And, and, and it was just a phenomenal project. And that, that also puts, put us on the map. Great stuff, great stuff. So we talked a lot about creative work, right? And when I hear creative, that means it has to come from somewhere. The inspiration has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us a little bit about how you get that inspiration? Um, for me, it, many ways. But um, sometimes I've had, had dreams about some designs. I speak to him, he makes them happy, happen, I'm sorry. 
Um, another times, and most of the time, for me too, is with uh, passion, like whatever is trending, trending in, in terms of jewelry or, or designs or, you know, colors or shapes. I sometimes talk to them about it and we have tried to, you know, make it into tile. The ombre is a very good example of it. It looks amazing on clothing and hair and stuff, but on tile it's like on another level. You just have an ombre somewhere in your house and you just, you can't stop looking up and down, up and down. It's just enchanting, it's beautiful, I love it. And that's for me, for Nelson is... Well, many. for me, just, just I, I, I take inspiration from many angles. Uh, just just everyday life, uh, just things that have been done, architecture, fabric, uh, design, photography. But if there was one specific one, I, I will say nature. Um, I, I take a lot of inspiration from nature, um, you know, from animal prints, trees, blossoms, uh, grass. We have a huge collection of, of just just natural type motifs in in in, in tile uh, from very simple colors to just you know basically everything taken after nature so for me nature is is a big one and speaking of nature you have a couple of places here in the house where that nature inspiration has been imprinted on some of your wall. So why don't we go and take a look at them so you can walk everybody through your thinking process when you created that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. let's check it out. Let's go. So we got the first room right here and this is the guest bathroom and um, plenty of colors and contrasts and yet everything seems well balanced out. So walk us through your thinking process when you were creating this room from like the creative point to the execution point and making everything look the way it looks now? Well, as I mentioned before, um, nature is, is a big thing for us, specifically for me. Um, you know, we, we take a lot of uh, ideas, concepts from nature. And obviously right here, you know, we have um, this particular mosaic, which is, it's a lotus flower and you can see the movement as it travels through the water and the uh, different variations and color shapes. Um, and, and we're just not afraid of um, using contrast and different materials. You know, we have glass, we have uh, porcelain, we have stone, we have brass, uh, crystals, uh, black panels. So, but it all together, you know, makes sense, it's cohesive. Um, you know, you have the same colors here playing into here, the same blacks playing onto the floors. And, and that's what really, you know, brings everything together. And, and just, we're not afraid of, of using color and contrast, um, as you can see. And not just that, you also play a lot with sizes. We were talking about it yesterday because from far away, you can see a big lotus flower. But as you start zooming in, you start seeing little pieces, which is the essence of what our say exists, right? So you play with patterns, you cut little squares here, but then you have little sharper shapes and then you have some curves here. And then Glad also talked about the ombre effect, which starts from this very light color going all the way down to darker colors or vice versa. And then you bring that ombre effect into the flower in itself as well, because you start very light here, but then as you're going in, now you have darker tones too. So kind of like a lot going on, but then not a lot going on. When you zoom in, it looks like it's a lot, but then when you zoom out, it's very well balanced and, and simple at the same time. Right, that's the idea, you know, and um, everything, you know, has its place, contrast, color, variation, different materials. That's really what makes a room. And um, we were talking about earlier, it's not just about the art as well. It's also about giving your personal touch. You mentioned that sometimes your clients are actually afraid to be who they are because they're too afraid to put their personal touch in fear that the next buyer might not be interested. But that shouldn't be the reasoning why they will want to bring a piece of art like this into their house. No, no, we, we believe that 
when you design your space, your house, your bathroom, is a reflection of you. So whatever that means, if you want to do color, want to do contrast, you want to do pattern, it, it's okay because this is your space. This is not only is a big investment, but it should be the space that you go and, and, and you feel comfortable. You love staring at whatever you created and, and, and just, you know, don't worry about the next buyer. The, let them worry about what their situation is. Just you do what you like. Right, and, and just to make it clear, you guys chose the lotus flower for your bathroom here, but that's not the only thing you do. Like, the, your showroom has plenty of other different patterns from butterflies to squares to, I don't know, a fish, like, you name it, right? Like, that's the beauty of what you create. Whatever your customer want, you can make it happen, right. as long as it speaks to them. Yeah, um, in my case, um I chose the lotus flower because of the meaning, what it means to me. If there's no mud, there's no lotus. And we've been through so much through the years, as we said before, you know, the war, 9-11, um, Katrina, the recession, the crash, everything that happened to us as, as people and as our business owners. But re nevertheless, we would always flourish we always try to make and it this is what happens and that's what it represents to me so again um, as a homeowner i don't think we should be afraid to put what we like what we what speaks to you what speaks to you and in in for people could be a circle a square uh, an animal um, lines or a print or whatever it is i feel that we should not be afraid to put it in some part of your house and just you know I mean, enjoy it and you know make it live with it make it part of you to represent you and you know just look at it every day and you know be proud of it and if it serves as an accent even better right yes absolutely so you have another room um upstairs, yes, that, upstairs. that you want to check out so let's just see it Hello. so now we have a much bigger room here Definitely a lot of contrast, but yet it feels very balanced at the same time. You're working with patterns, certainly. You have those flowers. Not a lot of flower, but a different kind of flower. Sizable, but at the same time when you walk in, you see a lot of stuff. You see curves, you see golden tones, you see white, you see gray, curves. So once again, our harmony, right? Right, so what we're looking for is is that one element that makes the room. In this case, is this wall. Um, and, and the reason why it makes it is, for one, it's the color. It has a lot of contrast. Um, it's got contrast within the, the, the wall. You got the white flowers, you got gold. But it's not, it's not just that. Uh, you know, when you look at the entire room, you have all the elements playing together. You have gold in the floor. Um, you got you know all the shower heads that are gold. Um, you got white in the bathtub, and then here, yep, right, the faucets and everything. But it all works together. Um, so and and that's what we always like to approach. Uh, you know, pretty much every project. What does it make? Wh what do we need to do to make this project? And usually it starts out with an accent, and everything just revolves around that. So everything in this room was designed around this wall. And you're also telling the audience to not be afraid to play around with patterns, right? Because if we look at this pattern right here, which is pretty sizable, then we got that smaller one over there. And then when you look up, you have another bigger one. And then you come here, there's plenty of curves over here, but yet everything else balances out and it looks very harmonious. So that seems to be the trend uh, so far with the two rooms that we have looked. Well, that's, we, as a company, as, an, as a designer, that's what, you know, always look for. Uh, not, not to be afraid of using materials, color, scale, patterns, just, just combine different things together. Um, you know, when you have a room that is all the same, color, the same everything, it's just boring. And, and I don't like boring, I like fun. Yeah, and we also try to make a make big pieces um, in the shower so it doesn't look as busy and crowded. It's more clean, it's easier to maintain, it's even cheaper to, to make. So yeah, we try to, as you said, combine all these 
and different possibilities, but definitely big pieces of tile in the shower. And, shower rooms. and I think size is what makes you guys, I mean, aside from the creativity, but you mentioned that there are a lot of companies out there who also work on mosaics, but they tend to work with one size in particular, but then you work with a wide range and a variety of different sizes that allows you to create those type of patterns that are pretty unique. Right, so, so we tend to work with larger scales. If you see these flowers are not little, neither one, the, the ones downstairs, they were, they were big. Even this floor pattern is big. And, and to me, that's, that's the difference. Uh, you know, th this had it been done in a small scale, would have been busy, the same with this. Had this room been done on a, that this pattern been done on a, on a smaller scale, it just is not the same. So, so scale and, and contrast, just, just don't be afraid of, of mixing big patterns, bold colors, black, white contrast, that, that's really what, what makes a, a space. So these are the bathrooms, but what about the other areas of the house? I believe you guys wanted to show us the kitchen, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's take let's a check look. Check it out. So now we have the kitchen. Definitely a lot of contrast here as well, but no flowers, but there are colors. Okay, so here we go back to the same theme, which is contrast. So we have a variation of colors. So we got blacks, grays, uh, gold, uh, different finishes. We got chrome, we got brass. So, so it all, it's, it's all cohesive. So, so the idea is just to create things that yet yeah, are, they have a lot of going on, but at the same time, you know, they, they flow together. Uh, you know, we have even on the floor, we have an accent that kind of complements the black from the stove, uh, the stone from the backsplash. So it, it's just the, no need to be afraid of, uh, doing color pattern, uh, you know, big scale, like this backsplash is all one piece. So it, it, it let the stone be the beauty. Um, and um, it, it's, it's just, it, when you combine different materials, different colors, it works together. And I mean, the quality of the looks, I mean, from what I see and the demand that you keep getting from your customers is definitely speaks for itself. Uh, but for those who, actually don't know you like how can they get in touch with you how can they appreciate more of your work well we have a lot of um, images and examples of our work in instagram we also have a website and uh, we have um, a location here in long island which we have our factory and showroom where we have a lot of different things up on display well, there you have it. So if you have some free time and you happen to be in New York, the link to their location is down in the description below. And if you happen to be far away from New York, there's still Instagram and the website for you to check their work out. And um, if anything, get in touch with them. Clara, Nelson, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye.